Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is the world of Wayne. I'm on a roll this week, this will be the third completed model that I've done this week. Now I say completed and I use that term in the loosest possible fashion because there is a couple of things that I still need to do. Those couple of things are going to take probably a week each to do. Uh, but I'll explain that a little bit more. We're going to be doing pack 12 of the Agora Models release of Bismarck, the legendary battleship. Okay, make yourself comfortable for this one. I have put chapter points in there. This video goes on for a long time, especially chapter 133, where we're testing the electrics. Now I have bundled all of these together and I've also got a little showcase at the end and I'm showing you every single thing working on the Bismarck. There are some videos to follow from this though, because I haven't done any of the rigging yet. And that includes the cranes. So uh, you're going to find there's going to be a separate video for the crane. And there's also going to be a separate video for the rigging and also a separate video for the hardback book that Agora Models provides for this build as well. And they will follow a uh, later time. But I wanted you to see exactly what's involved in pack 12. And I'll tell you what, it's one hell of a big pack. So big, it comes in two boxes. So uh, you're actually going to love this. But as I said, take your time. You don't have to watch this video all in one go. But I really do hope you enjoy this video as much as I've enjoyed the build. This is probably one of the most detailed builds I've done if you want to get this for yourself I have put the link down here to the Agora Models website you can get this all the way from pack one so final pack let's do this let's get cracking so this is the deck here we're going to turn that upside down just like this and we want to put the cog in place first. Now, as you can see, we do have an arrow on this just here. We want to make sure that points directly towards the stern. So this is going to go in this way, like that. Now, keeping that in place, we need to put the gun into position. So put the wire through, mount that on this side, like this. There we go, that's perfect. Turn it back over and we're going to be screwing this in with two 2.3 by 6 mil screws. I've just had to open every screw up there to figure out which one it is. It's the ones with the largest head there. So two screws, one in this side and then one in the other side here. So now that looks just like that. We can put that to one side because we're now going to create the elevation motor here so we need the casing we need to put the first cog in that looks like that it's got a cross on this side that's just going to go through the hole just there i'm holding this up with my hands then we're going to be putting the next cog in so this tab is facing up that's going to be going next to it there we then got this little catch to put in to keep that centered in there like this and then we're going to be putting a screw down there which is a two times six mil screw so screw that in then you can see that's engaged with that motor there. Don't want it too tight because you want this to be able to turn. So I'm just loosening that up a bit. There we go, that turns freely now. We're going to position this in this orientation here so we can actually put the brace on here, which is going to actually serve to be the linkage between the motor and the gun. We've got a shaft to put in, which looks like that. That's just going to go into the top of this motor here, like that. And then quite simply, all we're going to do is close all of this off by putting the top over here, making sure that shaft engages the other side of this. Can be a bit tricky, but there we go. That's all in place. Happy with how that is at the moment. And that's going to be secured in with two times six mil screws again. So four this time. Now it's very strange how on this one, we don't have the clips. We are going to be putting a shaft through this when we attach this to the gun. Remember the middle ones, we didn't. We just had to clip them in. Don't know what the difference is there, to be honest with you. So what we're going to be doing is, this is basically going to be going in this way, onto that channel there, and then we're going to be putting one of these shafts in here to actually keep that into place. So the easiest way to do this is to push the elevation of the gun as far up as you can get it. So this is going to bring it out then, and then put this little shaft in with the smooth side first, Make sure that goes through the center part of that gun, which it has. Get yourself some duckbill pliers here. Pinch all of that together so that that 
pin goes all the way through just like that there we go that's not moving excellent then we're just going to be putting the anchors on the side here that look like this this is going to hold this into position so they just go over the lugs that we see there and that's screwed in with a two times four mil screw here so one in there and then we've just got two that you're going to affix it to the base there make sure you've got the right one it should follow the uh the contour of this section here so i'm just going to get this lined up as you can see that's it on one side do exactly the same on the other side here so again over the lug two times four mil screw through the top perfect and then just two down the bottom here that's excellent so that is that elevation in place you can see you can no longer push this up and down but it's in position that's perfect all we're going to do then take the motor here again remove the wire we've got another sticker to put on this time this sticker says d5 so we put this on here just like that and then this motor is going to be fitted into the elevation motor here so it's going to go this way around with the wire coming towards the back section of the motor like this make sure it's engaged in there and then that's held in with 1.7 by 6 mil screws and one on the other side that's fully installed now and that is all there is to do in that stage. So this is the motor here and quite simply all we're going to do is take this cog that's going to be going this way round over the top of the motor we push this into place so it fits just like that just like normal we've got a sticker to put on this one says D4 so I'll put this on this ribbon cable here like that excellent it's going to move these railings just out of the way for a second because we're going to bring over this deck here and this is just going to engage I want it to be straight so I'm going to line it up so it's straight there this is going to engage into this section just here make sure that the cogs do join each other hopefully you can see that on one of the cameras still want that to be straight so stand by it I've got some flange screws here PWB screws let's put these in here on this side and just one on the other side here and now that gun can't move without the motor turning we can put that to one side because we've got to bring the ship over now that this is going to be interesting I never noticed it before but my ship had its own rigging some little spiders been uh, <laughs> making making webs all over my ship <laughs> okay so the first uh, railings are going to go into these sections here so they're going to be going on this here that's one side and we're going to do exactly the same on the other side which means we need some glue to drop these in the holes now these are going into the holes which look more like slots than holes so one there one there one there so I'll put the first one in make sure it's all in place there we go that's the first railing in place do exactly the same on the other side God, we haven't seen this part of the ship for a very very long time so here's the second railing going in oh that looks good it's coming alive with that I have to say excellent now we've got two bits of railing on photo etch parts I'll just get these off and these are just going directly behind the railing we've just put on so I'm putting them in these holes along the side I think that's everything let me just see how long it is no it goes all the way back to this point at the back here 
excellent so I'll put this railing in place making sure it goes down fully into these holes here there we go and it's straight oh that looks great you know what just this detail here is making this whole model come alive even if it wasn't already it's uh it's looking really good <laughs> I love it right make sure again that one's straight Oh, that looks brilliant. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Uh, and that's all there is to do in that stage. Uh, excuse me while I just look at this for a little while. <laughs> So I've taken off the deck which has got the large mass section in and now we've got this electric here. Now we need to put this into the casing here. So we need to put this electric into this section here. It looks like this, this way around so that that is coming out the other side like that. The wires will come out this way and we're going to close that off by putting this just over the top here. going to hold that into place and then this whole thing is going to be into this hole just here it's very hard for you to see I'm aware let me see if I can turn some cameras around this hole just here now it actually goes in the direction so the wire here is going towards the turbine room so this is going to fit on just like that there now that's going to be held in with two p.m. screws now these are the silver ones here so one in there and one in this side here all the things I haven't used on the Bismarck are in here look you can see the catapults down there <laughs> now we've got two contact plates which look like this now they're going to go over the holes that we can see just here again I might just be able to move it a little bit and it's probably going to be best on the top camera but these are just going to go over here like this end one on the other side and they're going to be held in once again with the two times four mil silver screws and now this area here we need to make sure this cable is out the way of this area just here because this I'm guessing is where we're gonna put the board so this is what the board looks like and it's got two plugs this side one this side this side we want to make sure points towards the aft section so when I put this in this is going to go in just like that with that cable coming out the side there once again this is going to be mounted in with some of the silver screws four of these and that's going to keep this completely into place you know I've just realized that I can uh, bring my side camera down <laughs> so you can see this better I apologize for that I'm not thinking this morning but uh, you get an idea of what I've done so far hopefully <laughs> The bigger this gets though, the harder this is to film, I have to say. It's uh, it's taking up the whole workstation. This will probably be more ideal to the, uh, the workbench, but I've got no cameras over there at the moment, so. Now the black lead that's coming from the side here is just going into this plug number six. They are all labeled, so it's just gonna go in like this. Make sure that goes in all the way. That's in. Now the two cables that are coming from uh, the ship here, these rainbow cables, they're going to go into ports one and two. I don't think it matters which one they go in. So one in there. And one in number two. Like that. Now we've got two cables left, a really long one and a really short one. It's the short one we want. Now this is the Supermast deck. On the underside of here, we're going to be connecting that cable into port 12 here. Hard to see, but it's in there. As you can see, port 12 is on the left-hand side there. I'm just going to put this gently down here because we need the longer of this cable now. And one end is going to be going into the back section of the control board that we just put in. And then this is where we're going to be using the sticky cable tidies here because we're going to be putting one just here and then putting that cable through there that will keep that into place like that the second one is going to go on the side here so then that cable there will go through this section like that just moving this around 
the third one I'm just going to go past this point here I'll put that in there so that cable is now coming out this side like that that means we can now put the main mast deck back on the ship I've moved the side camera up so you can see what that looks like now I'm just going to uh, I've got no place for my catapults at the moment so I am just going to keep them there <laughs> which means the last deck will go in here eventually but obviously uh, not at this time <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be taking this clamp here and we're going to be putting this just on the anchor section so that the trail here is going to be going down the anchor. So what I need to do is just push this anchor cable up and for that I'm going to use my tweezers here just to keep that out of the way so that I can get this in and it's just going to go underneath that section there. Just like that, sit on top of that. And then as you can see, the anchor cable is now running down that channel. And that's gonna fix itself in place, no problems at all. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna be using is these three ones here. These three, did I say what they are? It doesn't say, they're just, they're just calling them details. So I'm gonna get one of these off. And I have got my uh, glasses on. And I'm also gonna need to put some glue in my tray so the first one is going into the two holes that you might just be able to see on the side camera just in these two holes here whoops one here and one here just try to get this into aha uh -huh, the hole there and there we go that's the first one in you think that would have been a lot easier if we could put that on before we put the babette in didn't you so once we've done that, we've got one to put exactly on the other side there. One and two. You want to be really careful when you're putting glue in these parts because there's a danger, which I did with the first one, that this isn't going to turn because you've glued it into place. That happened with my um, Bruno gun, I think it was. Might have been Anton. I'm sure it was Bruno gun that that happened with, though. So if that happens, just so you know, and you have glued it, what the easiest way to do is to take this motor off here and then hopefully, that's better, take the motor off there and then turn it manually by hand. Don't let the motor try and grind your gears, otherwise you're going to have you're gonna have issues. Okay, so that one's on. And then we've got the two ones, which are what's left on this sprue here. Get these cut off. And they're going into the holes at the back. So what I'm doing is I'm putting glue just around the rims of those holes. And then I'm putting a bit of glue just in the middle there. Because that's pretty much where it's held on. Then I'm turning that upside down. Putting this in the channel. And sliding it along with my finger when it's the right way around. So that it'll actually go in. Now I could be using... Uh, I think I will actually. I will use my tweezers just to get that where it needs to go i know you can't see that but you will and there we go that's one end there and we just put one just in the other side which is going to be impossible because the gun's in the way <laughs> one two oops you can't see that and three and again i'll use my uh tweezers load this up this one's a bit harder because obviously the gun's in the way we're in now as you can see on the top camera that one's in as well so that's all four of those details in place on the gun I'm going to bring the box of tricks over and take out the parts that we need so i'm going to need these bits here uh i'm going to need the light i'm going to need the whatever this is the tubing i just chucked this piece away which i shouldn't have done we need that little tiny bit right there see and i almost chucked that away how bad's that see i make mistakes so you don't have to okay i'm going to cut this tiny piece off without losing it 
And believe me, God, this is a tiny piece. Now, this is going to plug the top end of that. I keep calling it a bow staff. It's, a, it's on the stern, so I'm guessing it's a stern staff. <laughs> uh, we're going to be putting that into the end there with a tiny bit of glue. So, got me glue here. Make sure I put it at the right end. That's going to go into the end here. Put this in. Oh my God, this is tiny. Just like that. And then I've got a little bit of sandpaper here because I've got a little... It does need a little bit of sand in. I'm going to let that set for a while. While that's setting, I'm going to tie a knot in one end of this cable here. So, oh, this is like super close up, this camera. <laughs> okay, this is where you can super close up see my mistakes. <laughs> okay, so it's just one knot tied really tight. You have to, to for, it, for that knot to stay, you really do have to over tighten it like that. And then it will stay. Once you've got that, we need to snip off the excess, which I'll do here quite close, but not too close that it's going to undo itself. There we go. And then we're going to be putting this into the hole here. You can see at the side there, my thumb's holding it. So I'll do it that way around. That's better. Into the hole here. And then It needs to be fed down. You know what? I should have done it the other way. <laughs> but it's going in. It's going in good. It's going to come out the end in a second. There we go. It's out the end. Push that all the way through. So that now that knot is flush on that side. Just like that. So put that to one side. Bring over the deck again. Because we're going to be putting a panel just onto this section here. That panel looks just like that there get this cut off and this is going to go make sure i got it the right way around into the two holes that we just got there so we need some more glue one and two it's got some little lugs at the bottom you can see those So just hold that in place for a second. And then once we've done that, we've got a little tiny hole behind there and that's where the bow staff is gonna go. I keep calling it that, the stern staff. <laughs> Are they calling it the stern staff or just the ensign staff? Sorry, I should be calling it the official name. That's where the ensign staff's gonna go. Through that hole, all the way there. So that's now coming out the other side. Excellent. And then we're going to be putting the bracket that you saw earlier onto this. This is the bracket here. <laughs> oh, this is getting difficult. How does that go? That's going to go above that light. So this is going to go on like this. Okay. And then this is going to be glued in to the two points that we've got here and here like that <laughs> i'll uh i'll try and switch camera again so you can see so it's going to go on like that i'm just making sure they're in the right holes yep they're going to go into the very foremost holes once you can't see that there so i need to get some glue into here so i'm going to just put that loose hope it doesn't go anywhere it's so fiddly but i have seen this operating with the remote and obviously every individual thing can be operated from the ensign staff to the bow staff to each individual gun. Looks absolutely brilliant. But there we go. That is in place like that. Turn the page because we've got another piece to put in. We need to bend this at right angles. So I'm just trying to figure that one out now. Okay, so this is going to bend up like that then we need to bend 
this top piece down i'm going to use my flat nose pliers for that put that in there bend that down on the right angle this is going on top of the ensign staff that we had before just like this i want to make sure that that's actually rotated around the way i want it there then this is going to be going down the top here and it's going to be glued on that section there so i'm going to put some glue in here first just around this rim which is partly the reason why i want to make sure that that ensign staff is actually the right way round. Uh, okay so i want that to be facing that direction there that looks good and then we'll put this over the top get in there this is going to go into the two holes into the plate below one and two have to keep it straight just like that and there we go looks pretty cool it is at an angle it is meant to be pointing off in a an angled direction it's not meant to be straight up so i'm going to turn this upside down without breaking anything now don't quite know how i'm going to have to probably put my helping hands up i'm going to change the camera put this in my helping hands because we're actually going to work on now doing this light into position okay so i'm going to push this into the channel here and here so it's held in perfect and then i'm going to need to cut it very flush on this section just here now i'm hoping i might be able to do that with my extremely sharp scalpel blade we're going to be putting the LED is going to go into this channel just there, like that. And all of that's going to be held into place by this part on the sprue. That's going to be fitting over the top of these sections here. And it's going to be screwed down with a PB screw. And I know we've got one of them because I've seen it. <laughs> Oops. Did anyone see me just stab myself then? I think we're good. I think it's time to uh, change that scalpel blade because uh, it's not cutting anything or it's, ha it's having trouble. I've got about a hundred of those blades. I never go short of them. Excellent. And that's in. Remove my helping hands. That's perfect. So that is what that's looking like. And that's all ready to light up. So now on these sprues here, we've got a little mark here, which lets you know what side of these railings go towards the bow. So I've just broken this one off here, uh, which means that this side is going towards the bow. So when I put this on, this is just going to go on the one that we've just put behind there, like that. And that's what that's going to look like. I'm just going to dry fit them first so you can see what they look like. So that's the two smaller railings in. I'm just going to do the same with the larger railings, which go behind it. And that's what both of those railings look like when they're in and that looks absolutely perfect so i'm just going to glue them down i'll show you what that looks like and there you go once those railings are on they'll look just like that we are going to now make the um aa guns through these little tiny things we've got here and i think i'm going to go back to that other camera here so you can just see exactly how tiny these are probably there look at them they are really, really tiny. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've got to cut some parts off this gun. Drop a glue in that side. Put the left hand side one in, which is this one. Into here. Turn it over. Put the right hand side one in. Exactly like I just did like that excellent put this into this tiny thing here excellent i need to turn it around because i'm not left-handed put some glue at the bottom just to hold that into place 
let's make it square put this top on make sure everything there is straight looking good flick back from the camera there we go all done we've got to make another one of them <laughs> so we've done two guns now they just get put into the ship um let me just show you actually and by let's move those guns over there they're going to be just put into the ship just onto the first superstructure deck right at the top at the highest point there and then these single guns that we've got here that i cut off that look just like that they're going to be going just behind these spotlights here but i'll do that off camera and then when i uh splice everything together hopefully it'll all be uh in one place so just show you those guns in place that's the um aa guns there and then the single guns are going down here just onto that section there okay so the plane uh, this should hopefully be easy <laughs> but we will see okay so the first thing i'm going to do is we've got the two halves of the fuselage here that we're going to bond together so got me glue get that here change the camera and we'll put some glue in here that's the fuselage in place the other way we could have done this was what we'd done last week with the uh tamiya cement we could have just run that down the side i suppose it's up to you what you do i think i think this is the way i did the original one drop this pin in here so it comes out the other side there we go i'm going to hold that in with some flat nose pliers because i don't want that falling out when i put the propeller on the end which i'm about to do now now I get to push that in. So there you go, that's the propeller on. Now I get to glue that. Okay, so this is gonna go on there, just like that. And as you can see, the propeller is then free to turn. So that's good, okay. Then we've got some tiny details to put on, which are, oh, I'm gonna change the camera again so you can see how small these are. They look like that. <laughs> don't get much tinier do they okay so uh j is by the look of it a chair then we've got the control arm and then uh we've got a gun behind it i think we'll do the uh the control arm first i think so uh need my glasses for this little bit of glue into the socket of the front first get my tweezers Make sure I put this in the right way. And I'll get this one in. The chair's in. Okay, so we're going to put the gun in. That's the last bit here, just into the square at the back. There you go. And there's the uh, gun in. Uh, we're going to be putting the cover over the top now. I put the original one of this in with... Um, micro crystal clear but because it's actually tabs rather than the glass i'm not going to have a problem putting this in so i am using a bit of glue on there and then get this in and there we go and that's the top on looking good right then we're going to be mounting this onto the wings so the wings are going on so the flat side is facing forwards so put some glue just on these lugs here and into these bits just here line that up and that's going to go on like that okay so it's going to put these two parts on here uh, i'm just going to make sure i put them in the right way so when they go in it's going to slot in like that so you can see the holes on this side here so i'm going to put a bit of glue in there and that will ensure that they're pointing in the right direction when the next parts go in so uh just checking hang on so if this is this way round then 
we want these pointing these need to point away from these holes right so one in this side stand by so it's pointing away from those holes and the same on this side again away away from the holes cool so we've got two of those in there so they're going to go this way around and then we're going to be putting the braces in between them hopefully you can see this which look like these two parts here just checking what part goes where so this part is going towards the front of these so i'll put some glue in one side towards the front okay so that's one side in and we'll put some glue just into the other side here okay we've got the back ones to put on on that one i've just put in there you just want to make sure that the uh the little details on the front are pointing forwards so this one on the back is going this way around i'm hoping it's in as it means to be i'm just going to check it do a check fit on this make sure this is going to go in okay two at the back two at the front one under one wing yep that's going to fit absolutely perfect so Pat some glue just on the tops here. Here. And on these sides here. Excellent. And then they're just going to match the holes at the bottom here. So one wing in this side, one wing in the other side. Then just line up the center holes. Yeah, I'm happy with that. See, look, it's all square it feels a lot more secure now as well which means the last thing i've got to do is i've just got to put the cage on which is going on the bottom and we're just going to be gluing this into place into these tabs here so on the bottom of this okay so the tabs are actually on the plane so i don't know if you can see them i'm going to put one in here one in the top and one in this side here and i'll put this one in place <laughs> And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be putting this control board into the aft section of the ship. This is what that looks like. Um, and we're going to be putting this under the deck here without crushing anything. It's going with the ones with three sides on here uh, are going to go furthest away from this section here. So this is going to be going on this side just like that. Now, the importance of why we've had to put stickers on everything is because it makes life hell of a lot easier when we're actually connecting this to the board. Because on the board, we have got numbers. Oh, stand by. This one's a little bit harder to get in, but we're there. Right, I don't think I need my screwdriver anymore, so I'm going to put that away. So, we've got 876 on this side, 543 on this side, 21. And then we've got two plugs here. Not quite sure what they're for yet. So uh, let's get these in the way it wants me to do. So first of all, it wants D3, which is this one coming from the elevation motor. It wants that to go underneath this to come out the other side. There you go. That's number three. And quite simply, we're just going to plug that into port three of the control board, which is here put it in and then make sure that goes in all the way so if it's flush just like that right next one we're going to have d4 which is this ginormous one the rainbow one coming from this motor here they want it going round the side but then cutting in so it's doing that along the side there just uh, get this fully under there and then once again that's going to plug into number four And again, make sure that's all the way in, which it is. Then we've got D5, which is, I'm guessing, this one. 
which again is part of the uh oh, i thought this one was an elevation motor it wasn't this one was the rotational uh sorry this one was for the um uh the 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 turrets the guns to fire backwards and forwards this is part of the elevation motor here so d5 again going underneath excellent and that's going to go into number five now i'm very conscious when the uh dora which what this gun is is turning i don't want this wire to get trapped i don't think it will but it should be okay so we've basically got all of the plugs in to that side no problems at all so next one we're going to take run cable d6 which is the bow light or the uh jack staff as people call it they're going on the back that's going to go into number six but they want this to go again underneath up and then round into the number six socket there okay we're good and that's all the way in so we're going to be connecting the last of these wires up now so we've got d7 and d8 so this is d7 that we're going to plug into this side that's going to go in here and when i operate this i want to make sure it is lifted up so the propellers because we're going to be able to see the propellers turn i will change the camera when we're doing the test of electrics just so we can see everything d8 which is this one that sticker almost came out so this is a three pin lead it's going to go in here right i'm going to have to put this the other way around to plug these in so this one's d2 sorry my hands are in the way here they will be out the way soon i promise so that's d2 <laughs> okay and d1 is going in here okay i think make sure that's all the way in which it is i think that's everything in that needs to be in i will play around with that in a second all i've got to do now is figure out where i'm plugging the power so i've got my test board here like this making sure it's off which it is and i want to plug this into the very top of this board right stand by to have another look at it so if this is like that this is going to plug into the top right okay now that's in so the first thing we're going to do is when i switch this on i don't know what's going to happen uh, it just says Switch the battery box on. The turret initializes. It rotates right, then stops and returns to the center position. So I'm expecting that to turn when I turn this on. Are you ready for this? Please work. And there we go. You remember I said about the glue on this? That the glue might stop that turning? But there we go. That's turned okay. We are caught up here at the bottom though. So what I'm going to do is turn that off again. I'm going to leave that a little bit more. Oh, something just pinged off. There we go. I'll put that back on. That was one of the details. I'm going to turn it back on and see what happens now. Oops. It should centralize itself. You can hear the gear clicking there. There you go. So, that bit's okay. <laughs> Right, so when I press S1, which is the top button, this should turn around. So I'm going to bring that back a bit. There we go. And press S1 and see what happens. Aha, so we're firing and we're turning. Can you see those things pinging off on the side there? This is just these details here that we put on. So we've got to be careful of those to put them back on afterwards. So it looks like the turret is a pretty successful test. So I can press S1. Okay. <laughs> S2. Now, S2 should control that anchor. Hopefully. 
Press S2 to stern anchor chain raises and lowers very slightly. And apparently the three propellers are going to turn. The anchor seems to be working okay. Can you see the propellers want to turn, but they're not? You see that? Look, they're trying to, they're trying to turn. I don't know if it's meant, if that's a successful test or not. And the three propellers turn. Press the button again to end the test. So I'm going to have to look at that. I don't know if that's a successful test or not. Okay, the next one is this jack staff here. So hopefully goes here if i press s3 the light should come on there which it does excellent it's funny that that one's white the one at the front is blue i don't know if that's intentional but there you go and then s4 you've already seen these work so i know they work and that's the rudders here which if i go down there and press s4 as you can see go left and right so it's only really those propellers that aren't working at the moment Okay, so we have got this green lead which comes all the way from the other end of the uh, of the ship here. I'm just going to get that untangled. There. Now we're going to be plugging this into the four pin socket that we've got. I'm just going to unplug this test board. The four pin socket that we've got here. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, I'll get it in and then I'll give you an idea of how this is. Gonna have to stand up for this so that is in there now i can put this all back on because all we've done is basically taken the power out of that last module there because what we're doing now is we're going to be powering it from the middle module and to get to that i have to just remove this part of the deck here just have a look at right they want it plugged into socket five i believe no as Yep, into socket five. All right, I'm going to turn my battery box off. Right, that's all connected up. I'm just going to put everything down so it kind of looks like a whole ship. All right. Okay, I think this time I'm going to put my camera up here so we can see the whole thing okay bring this light over there's the bismarck <laughs> which is all over the place it's not sitting properly because obviously i've got the lead coming out from uh the side here there we go so apparently we're all connected when i turn it on we're gonna get calibration again but i believe we might get calibration on all four guns i don't know but let's see Yes, all four are turning. Can you see that at both ends here? You'll hear that clicking of the gears. That's just it calibrating to centre. And then they'll go back. This one's a little bit slow. Slightly off that one there. So that one's a, a little bit off. But there we go. We'll have to figure that one out. That's problem number two. God, when it comes to electrics... <laughs> we got problems okay so the first button we're going to press is s1 on the tester now just so you know when we get the control board we can actually control each gun individually so i'm not too worried about this one going slightly slow at the moment um so when press s1 on the tester this will test all three functions of all four main currents uh turrets simultaneously so you can see these ones if i uh let me think uh i'm going to try and put a split screen on this so we've got uh stand by if i move that camera up there you can see that and then if i bring this one over here you should be able to see everything in one go hopefully <laughs> we'll see how it goes okay so i'm going to press s1 now we'll see if these front ones turn god it's making a lot of creaking noises but uh yep yeah, they are doing what they meant to do This one's decided it uh, it doesn't want to spin as much as the other ones. Don't know why that is. I have to figure that one out. So the problem I've got there 
we've got the same on this one as well not too worried about it because when we did the initial setup which i'm going to do again just so you can see this they're all controlling each other no problems at all so there's no problems with the motors turning it as you can see there and the same here oh no look that one's going all over the place <laughs> there we go they're going back now they definitely need to calibrate each other up but obviously these are controlled individually so the fact that they're turning i suppose is successful okay so s2 manually position the gun barrels of all six turrets so that they are pointing upwards before the test so it's going to be testing six it's saying hang on stand by it's going to be testing these here so we want to make sure these are all pointing up because we don't want them to jam so i'm going to split the camera i'm going to change over the camera now so hopefully we're going to be seeing these move and that's going to be test s2 they're calibrating that one's turning that one's turning it's turning back this one isn't doing anything oh it is now and there we go are they doing it on the other side all three on the other side are working perfect so there you go that's cool oh look the capstans are actually spinning as well they're making my anchors go up and down on both of these look i didn't know that look that one's going up and down <laughs> and the same's happening on the front of the ship over here it's a bit dark actually you can't really see that but uh yeah but i'm glad they're working i think uh, where they haven't been like operating for a long time look they're, they're they're lovely and smooth now uh we'll have this camera up here again you can see more on that the ship that way i've deliberately put it in the dark here okay because i'm going to press s3 and we'll see what comes on right the bow lights on the searchlights are on searchlights are on searchlights are on all the bridge lights the navigation lights are on that is a perfect test and the and the bow lights on as well that is excellent so i'll get this down again so you can see that they're all on and uh stand by i've got an idea some something i can do i like that right one second i'm going to get my phone hopefully this will work hopefully <laughs> oh this is one of them streams tonight right hang on a second i'm gonna use my phone believe it or not as a camera so one second just setting it up hopefully this works right the screen is just going to go blank for a second but you should still be able to hear my voice so i oh know we're already set up that's excellent so there you go lights on there the lights on there there's the admiral deck and the lights there searchlight at the top there the navigation lights there we've got a green one that side and if we go upside down we've got the red one the other side there oh it's flipped it around for me and then we've got the bow staff there which if i go around it is on trust me but that's a blue light it's really weird so looking down the ship that's what that's looking like hey so the lights are working i'm expecting all the radars and stuff to start spinning around so are we ready for this that one's working that one's working that one's working i think we're good this one's going slower than the other ones but uh, uh it was yeah it's going it's going a bit slower that one compared to those ones not quite sure why that is and then the rudders just down here as you can see a turning i've got the propellers working okay this is everything that we've got in here as you can see you've got the cranes and hundreds and hundreds of sprues so i will at one point uh during this build today have to get the ship down but the first couple of frames we need is one that looks like that and the one 
that looks like that. You can see how much there is to do in just this one stage. So it wants me to separate parts one, two, three, and six from the frame. So let's get all of these off. And that's probably gonna be best on the close-up camera. I'm gonna get some glue out because I can see that being uh, something we're gonna need lots of today. And I'm gonna just put some glue just around these lugs just on this side here because the first thing that's going in is this half uh, half cylinder shaped piece here and that's just going to go around this section making sure that's straight that looks good then on the lug in the center i've just put some glue on it we're going to have this cylinder section Make sure that sits flat. There we go. And then put some glue just on the top pieces of these because we're going to be putting a top section on here. So it looks like that. It's amazing how just those three details there <laughs> have now made this. Now we need one of the crane bodies looking like that. And this is going to be going inside this section here. So this little tab is going to be on the left there. Now it doesn't tell me to glue this into place which is a bit weird so I'm gonna leave that there I think what's keeping it in is the top of the frame here and if I get the uh, things that I've been using it's this one here that we need to take off so just dry fitting there that's gonna fit in just like that so I'll put some glue just on these edges here you can see the tiniest of rims here and here I'm just going to hold that down for a second. We then need this gear that's still on that frame. Just cutting that one off. So if I turn this over, we want this gear here looking like that. This end first is going to go into that hole and it will engage down below like that. So it's sitting perfectly straight there. So I could take that off and what I need now is the crane support that looks like that. And I also need some of the hydraulics from there, there. That quite simply is just gonna clip into the top clips here. So one, two, you're not gonna need glue for this. They should hold themselves quite nicely in there so that they can move, as you can see. We get to cut the final detail of this sprue here. This is just one crane, you know, we've got to make two of these. So that's now empty. So this is gonna go on this way here, so that, oops, let's get this last bit in. There we go. So that this little sort of like excess piece is coming to the left-hand side, sorry, the right-hand side of that base there. So that looks like that. So I'm gonna turn this upside down so it looks like that. And we're actually gonna be installing this into place now. So the hydraulic pistons are just going into the two holes at the front, like that. And the backs are just gonna go into the second hole in, the hole nearest to the, if I put those in first actually, it's probably gonna make it a lot better. Those holes here, there's still some holes just at the end there. I'll put the hydraulics in. Again, there we go. All we need then is one of the cranes. These look good. The detail's already on the end of that for us. That's gonna go into the end holes, just like that. <laughs> Looking good at the moment, isn't it? This is where I'm gonna need these two block parts. So I'll get those off. We're just going to be securing one side of this to the other side of this. There's a little sort of lug in there that's gonna help us do that. So I'll put a little bit of glue just into that center hole there. And then we'll glue these two together. So that looks like that. I do think I am meant to, uh, to glue this into place. So I am just gonna glue that there. But that is the first cannon completed. This section isn't attached at the moment, just so you know, and we have got that section there. So we've got to go build a second one. So I think I'll use the power of editing and make that come true now. 
and there you go that's two cranes and two sections there all complete we can put the cranes to one side now because we're going to be working on the bow booms and for that we're going to need this section that looks like that we're going to need the details on here so I take one of these off and we also need one of these tiny details here on the other sprue obviously the ship being quite symmetrical it looks like we're building things twice a lot on this section so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be putting this section in here like this at a right angle so it's sitting just like that we're then going to be threading this tiny part onto this boom but we're not gluing this into place so that's just going to fit on like that now i'm going to slowly put things aside here moving everything completely out of the way because i need to bring the ship down so i'm going to be taking these parts here off the sprue i need two of them at the moment so i need one they're labeling up as r3 and it does say that on the uh on the actual sprue and one that says r2 which is there now the r2 one is just going into this little hole that we can see just there so i'm just putting some glue around it and it goes in with the stalk upwards just like that so it's sitting kind of like almost straight to the deck we're going to do the same with R3 which is going next to it here obviously R standing for right we're on the starboard side of the ship here put that one in perfect so there we're putting the bow boom in to this one here I think in the instructions they actually tell us to do the port side first I've done the other side first so that's going to go in just like that and this should be able to swing in and out like you can see there but I'm going to leave that rested we're going to do exactly the same on the other side as you can see that's the second one in as well I lost this part here it's on the floor somewhere I will find it and put that back on uh, but that's the port side done as well so in a similar fashion to the bow booms there we're going to be doing some stern booms now these are a lot shorter they look like this as you can see there so I'm going to do the port side one first and as you can see we have got this little thing here this is just going to go into the top you don't want to glue this in because you want to be able to turn this and this is really impossible to film as you can see I've got it like over a great expanse here in the workshop but they're going to go in here so I have got a little sort of like um, holder which is just going to go into this side here I'll just put some glue into this hole and just put the rear boom in here make sure it rests on top of that one and that should look like that we're going to do the same with the other side now on the end of the booms we just put in we do want to glue just one of these buffers again on each side I've still got to find the original one it's somewhere in here I'm sure it won't take long to uh, find it so it's probably best if you look at the pictures for that but i actually just put it on and then i just put some of this tamiya extra thin cement just to float into the uh, gap there and stick that into place now i've got these booms to put in place this is the port one i'm holding here now these are propeller protectors and they're just going to go into the two holes here like this i'm just holding that in there we go that looks like that we do exactly the same on the other side now while we've got the camera focused on this section here we're going to be putting some safety rails on each side here now these are what the safety rail looks like and the smaller ones here are number one so this is what i need first so the first one is just going into these two holes here one and two we're going to be putting another one of these number ones next to it and a third one next to that one as well there's those three in and now we're going to need the longer number twos which are going into the holes next to it that's one and two and then we're going to repeat that on the other side now we need some rails number three 
they're going to be going in front of this 15 centimeter gun here so I've got one going in here and one just at the other side I haven't put these decks in uh, properly at the moment but then we're going to move to the starboard side and we're going to do exactly the same thing we just done on these sections here so I'll cut back look at the instructions to see where these go and I'll show you what that looks like so when they're in they look just like that and that is the stern of the ship there now we're going to be installing some railings onto the port side here so again I've got my mobile phone to show this it's just going to go on the port side here the reason for this gap here is because the way I've got the ship displayed it's not actually supported at all uh, but uh when that's supported that will go but that's just going to go into this section here so i'll put that in and show you what that looks like so that's in like that we're going to continue that line with the next railing which is a uh, 13418 and then finally we're going to continue it with the longer one 13419 so i'll get all of those in so i've actually just uh changed the orientation now so you can see that gap's gone and that's what those railings look like on the port side i'm going to repeat that on the starboard side so there you go that's the starboard side done as well now the only thing i don't know is where we put the inner fences in in front of that 15 centimeter gun it didn't ask us to do it on this side so i'm wondering should i do that now with what i've got spare i think i will so in the interest of symmetry they're all done on the port side now as well now we're going to be assembling the catapults. Do you remember them from earlier on? Which does mean I need to take off these details from the um, photo etch part here. So we need to bend those photo etch parts. They look like that. I've got both of these in place now. Which means I now need, once again, to bring over the ship. <laughs> Before I do though, I'm going to bend this photo etch part ready for when the uh, ship comes on. So what I need to do is just bend these sides up slightly at a slight degree so if I show you how far probably around about that so I'll do that both sides on both ends because I am going to need this later on these are just duck bill pliers they do help as you can see to bend no problems at all so that piece with the tabs bent is ready to go as well and basically this section here is just going to fit over that section just like this here so i'm going to just put some glue here and just on the wall here so i can get this in and there we go that should look like that we do exactly the same on the other side can you believe we finally get to put these catapults in? I think that's great. So they're going to go in this way, just into the holes here. Just insert these in. And there we go, that's the catapults in. And as you can see, they move, which I think is brilliant. We've had these right from the very start. It's great to be able to see that put in. We're then just going to cover it with a photo etch part that we saw that we bent earlier. I'm just going to be gluing this into the deck here. There is two little tiny holes on this side so that fits perfectly in like that which just means then I get one of the Arado planes and I can put that into the catapult here I'm not gluing them in and that is all there is to do in that stage now we don't actually use the cannons in this one so we need to keep that safe but that looks pretty impressive now I don't think I'm going to be actually taking away the planes, so I think I might glue them into place uh, I don't want to play with them or anything, so uh, I'll fix them down. But that looks absolutely amazing. As a matter of fact, I'll show you on the video on my phone how impressive that looks. Check that out. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So as you can see, there's a few boats in here. <laughs> Let's open them up and I'll lay these out. So basically we've got two long ones here. I'm just going to separate them because they're not meant to be together yet. Then we've got four, which again, <laughs> need really to be separated, of the medium size. Then we've got one really tiny one here. And we've got the railings, which I'll keep to one side for now. Some really tiny ones on the sprue. So 
as you can see we've got fewer of them <laughs> there's parts everywhere and just some parts for the boats that we can actually see here as you can see I think I've separated everything out that is to do with lifeboats <laughs> everything else I've got here that's to do with lifeboats is to do with the ship so we've got these details for the ship everything else that you see here are for the lifeboats so the first thing we want is one of the boat interiors looking just like this this is going to be going into one of the boats here now it fits just before that tab so when this is in it's going to be into this section just like that there now this section we don't have to glue in place but we are putting the cover over the top of it which is this one here that's going to go over the top just like that and this cover is what's going to hold everything into place so this is what we are going to be gluing into place so there is sort of like a rim just around this section here which is what i'm spotting the glue into just on the inside there and i'm going to connect it just from the rim at the back as well there we go so that when i push this section down and lock it into place that's not going to come out at all so that is what that looks like now we've got some photo etch parts to put on this so i'm going to take two of these off and because they're only held on one side there that's how easy they are to come off and again you just hold the whole detail when you do this so there's no chance of bending they come off lovely and flat these are just going to go into the holes that we can see just at the front here probably need my uh, tweezers to help me get these up put the first one in there you go and the same with the second one and then just make sure that they're at 90 degrees which they are so they look just like that we're going to repeat that three more times And there you go one two three and four so that's those four complete now we're going to do the smaller ones so i put these to one side now they look like this they're on a sprue so i need my sprue cutters to get these off and we've also got the interior here as well on another sprue and just like last time i'm gonna tap some glue just on this rim at the front and the rim at the back and just put the interior in like that and then we've got the smaller one exactly the same way I'm just gonna file down a little burr I've got at the front and back of that section there we go put this one in and then we're going to be fitting the yawl on top of the cutter here so again just going to have a little bit of glue just into the inside here and this will be going on top just like this we're going to make another one of those so by the power of editing i'll take these two sections here and make them come together and that's the second one completed as well now we're just going to do the larger ones here so i'll do one because we've got to do two of these and just in a similar fashion we're going to take the interior and put that into the base like that we're going to be taking the top and that's going to go over the top it's very similar to what we've just done this goes over the top like this so we're going to take a railing from this frame here get this snipped off that's just going to go onto these three tabs here here and here oh no 
thought I was going to need my glasses for that. So there you go, that's in like that. Then we want to take two of the railings on this photo etch part here. These are going on these two points here and here next to it. Need my uh, tweezers again to help pick these up. So that's one. And that one's two, and I'm just going to line them up so that they're upright, which looks good. And we're going to be doing the same on this one. So the base in there, let's get some uh, glue just on this end. And in a similar fashion, we'll create the second one. So then that's those two complete. And then finally, one more to make the motor yawl exactly the same way as we did before. Put this section in here, glue the top down. And then this time the railings are just slightly smaller. As you can see on the photo etch part here. So I'll get these in. And there we go. That's the last one completed. So what I'm going to do now is I've got all of these boats, and there's a lot of them, isn't there? Look at this, lined up. So I'm gonna bring the ship down and we're gonna be putting these into place. It does mean I'm gonna be switching over to my mobile camera, so the sound is gonna go a little bit echoey. So as you can see, we've got the boat stands all around this section here. So the four boats that we created before, they're gonna go on there. So I put these on, these aren't glued in. one two three get them all the way in there and four now while we've got the port side here and you can see the hanger the two smaller ones are going to be going on top of that hanger there so there is two spaces for these to go one on that side and one on that side again I'm not sure if I'm going to glue those in yet we'll have to see <laughs> now the first Admiral's boat the larger one here is going onto the larger section of that hanger there and then the hanger on the other side is going to have the smaller motor yawl like that and the second apples boat just in this section right there so it's going to look like that i probably will glue them in i can't think of any situation where i'm going to be taking them out now i've moved my camera to the front here because as you can see we've got some holes here for the bollards it basically starts from all the way down here where you see my fingers so we've got bollards cleats cleats, bollards, bollards, cleats. And we're gonna be going around this whole uh, stern section here, or the aft section, to get all of these in. So that's the cleats and the bollards in. All we're gonna do now is finish off the railings. I've got them here, so I'll put them in and we'll have a look at the whole ship. And there we go, that's the bollards and all the railings complete. So theoretically, Apart from the, can, uh, the cranes, that is everything done on the Bismarck. <laughs> We've just got all the remotes and rigging to do. Which is going to be a little bit crazy, because it's already going to stem from this central mast here. But uh, I'm sure you'll agree. Wow. It looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be taking this base here and we're going to be putting some cushions just over these sections here. Now I'm guessing uh, these are the cushions here. Uh, when we put these on, these obviously are not going to mark the surface that we're putting them on. So uh, they just go into 
these indents here. So that's one, two. Looks like we've got spares on this as well. I don't know how big this is eventually going to be. Three. Oh, no, that wasn't on straight, Wayne. Come on. <laughs> Three. And over here, four. You'll be pleased to know, everyone, that I did a lateral flow test today. And I am now COVID free. So, all good. <laughs> there we go. Look, that's the uh, cushion pads on. Now we've got a bracket to put on looking like this. Now at the top of that, you can see we've got an arrow. So we want the arrow pointing towards the center of this piece here. So that's gonna go on just like that. It's gonna be held into place with two screws and they are 2.3 times six mil screws. So I'm using the screws that they've replaced on this build with the ones that have come. Now I'm guessing the 2.3 ones are the bigger ones here. So I'm gonna put them in. That's one. And here's number two. Now we've got this class to put in. It's already spring loaded, as you can see. And we want this side to be facing up, not this side. So we're just gonna be putting that into this section just here and it clips in like that. We've then got the battery box here and we need to take this section here, which is gonna mount the battery box. This is just gonna go on this way with a wire hanging down so that this catches on the left that's going to go on just like that now this is going to be held into place with two screws and these are 2.6 by 4 mil screws so i've got them here that's the first one i will uh have to get my son out today to get me some c cell batteries but i'm sure part work upgrades are already looking at this thinking i'm going to do a mod for this because <laughs> it's exactly the same thing as what we've got for the spitfire and the terminator really these c cell batteries but uh there you go now i'll take this wire off that's going to free up these power cables here and basically they want us to just channel it behind this tab just here so this is going to go into the tab that will hopefully uh stop them pinging off in all directions and holding it into place like that then we're going to take the big battery box here and then we're going to put the cable through this hole just here so that's going to go all the way through like that now we need to take one of the brackets looking like that and they do have numbers in it as you see this one here has got a number one written just there and we want to run this cable through the channel of this section just like this here now we need to take its other half, which is labeled number three, which I have got here. And that's just gonna go over the top to keep all of that into place. So I'm making sure I'm not pinching any wires when I do this. And there we go. That's in place perfectly. And they're gonna be put in with the 2.3 times six mil screws. I say screws, it's just one screw just down the center there. So I'll put that in nice and tight. I thought we we're gonna be attaching it from this side here, but we're not, we're keeping that side uh, vacant at the moment. Now, obviously this is still able to be pulled through like that, as you can see. I'm gonna be adding or extending this out. So we're gonna be extending this out. So we need the arm part number two now, that looks like that. That's just gonna go into the channel there. And we are gonna extend that out just so it's coming out the end. On top of that, we're gonna be taking the part that's labeled number four which is this long piece here, and that's gonna go over the top of all of these together. Once again, just making sure that we're not pinching any wires in here. And these are gonna be fitting together again with these 2.3 screws. I'm gonna put one in here first, very fiddly keeping all of this together. There you go. Then I will slot this end in, ready for the other end. There we go, make sure that's perfectly lined. So I'm not again pinching any wires in here. And then another screw just down here. So there we go, we've got a conduit for the whole lead here. And as you can see, I can pull this through all the way here. 
Now this is going to be going into the base just on this side here through the hole where we had that. So we push it through and that's going to be held in by a 2.3 times 16 mil screw. This is a really long screw, this one. As you can see there. So that's going to go through the top and that's going to hold all of that into place. I'm going to put all of that to one side because we're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time we've not got any wire to conduit through. So what we do, we take parts one and three that I've got here, put these together like that, put one of the 2.3 screws in here, and then in a similar fashion to what we've just done before, but as I said, we don't actually put anything through here. We're going to put that section on like that and then this section just over the top so the way i did it last time was actually just put that section on first put a screw in like this then i fed this side through just underneath put another screw in i think that's the easiest way to do that And then just like last time, we can bring over this section here and in a similar fashion to what we've done, this is just going to go in there like that, using one of the big screws to lock that into place. Excellent. Now I'm just going to put the battery box just in there like that for a second because I need to turn this over because we've got a column to put in here. That's what that looks like. Now we have got a lug just at the bottom there. That's going to go into the larger section there. So it's going to go in like that. And that's going to be held in just from the underside with three 2.3 times six mil screws. So it's one, two, and three. So there we go. We've got that control panel in there. And then what we want to do is keeping the battery box just out of the way for the minute because this is eventually going to be able to just slide in and out of here we're going to be putting the top on now the top was what we worked on at the beginning with the pads on that's just going to go over this like here push that into place and that's held in with some of the 2.6 times six mil screws so i've got them here six of these we want to put in and there we go, that's that on there. So this battery box now, as you can see, can just slot into the side like that. You do have that catch at the back, which is gonna keep that in. So when that slides in, just get the wires in, the catch at the back should hold that into place like that. But that's what we've done so far with the stand. Now we do have some parts to put on for the ship here, as you can see, we've got this, we've got a connector, and we've got a couple of rails which are going to help to bend the ship together to stop there being any gap in the decking. We're going to do that afterwards. So for that, we need this section here, which has got the grill for the speaker in there. We'll take the speaker, looking like that, and that's going to go in this way, just like that, with the wire coming off in this direction here. We have got a cover, to put over the top to stop that speaker going anywhere that looks like that that's just going to go over the top here uh, there is a little notch in the side as you can see there which we want to make sure that the wire for the speaker is going through so that will keep that sitting flush we need some four 2.3 times six mil screws to put in there got them here so i'll get these in on the other side here, as you can see there, we've got a switch plate with a power button. So we've got the actual lens for that, which is just gonna go over the top into that hole there. And that's held in by this little bracket here, which is going over the top like that. Once again, the screw of choice on this build is the 2.3 times six mil screw. So I'll get two of those in. So from that side now, as you can see, we've got a switch in here which doesn't seem to power anything it's not like a switch that you press i think it's just going to light up to say that it's on uh, but that is in place 
just like last time we've got a control tower to put on and once again I'm looking for the larger hole here which is this one here for that lug to go in like this and again that's going to be screwed in with 2.3 times 6 mil screws and there we go that's the control tower in now we've then got this support that's going to go into the top of this section it has got a little notch in there so it can only go in one way into this section here we're just going to clip that in like that we're then going to be putting the control board in i'm just going to get this out this is what the control board looks like here now that's going to go if i just move the speaker wire out of the way that's going to go into the four holes that we've got here so when we put this in it's going to fit in just like that there probably best on the top camera now that one's held in by 2.3 times 4 mil screws these are tinier ones these are and there we go that's the control board in place now we've got a cable here looking like that we're going to take the other control board which looks like this and we're going to be putting one end of this cable just into the end here making sure it's the right way around that's going to go in like this make sure it's in all the way like that and then this is going to be mounted to where that underside of the switch is because we've got a spring here that switch is going to be operational i guess it does mean that we will be able to push it i guess i still don't really see how this works because obviously even though there's a spring in there when that's fitted into place it still doesn't provide much of an on off switch for this this doesn't move so uh, a little bit confused there but i'll get this in that's one and two so we've got two control boards in there i just don't understand how that switch can operate but you know it is what it is why have we got the spring in there it doesn't make sense we put a clamp over there to stop that being pushed down we'll figure it out <laughs> so now that's in we're going to be bringing over the base that we worked on previously feeding this wire here through the hole here we're going to join both of these together so turning that upside down we're going to be attaching these with the long screws again to keep them into place one this side and one the other side we then need this connecting cable now these brass bits are going to be going to the bottom of the ship where we put that connecting plate which for that reason that's going to fit on top of this section just here so for that reason i want to make sure that these sections here are pointing towards the this side of the uh, base here so i'm going to feed that through to the bottom just so it comes out and then that's going to sit flat on top just like that now we don't mount that in at the moment we're just going to leave that in there but what we are going to do is we're going to be plugging in all the connectors here so I'm going to have this this way around just to show you where everything's going. So the lead that's coming from the other box here, this one here is going to go into this plug socket just there. So that's the one that's coming from here. I'm going to tidy these wires up a little bit. Now this blue lead from the on off switch is going to go onto the top. And then that one's in. The speaker is going onto the side. On this side here a little bit tight this one but that one's in and then finally this ribbon cable here that comes from the connector at the top is just going into that one there again make sure that they're plugged all the way in and that's every wire in there we can then put this base on over the top like this just like last time it's going to be held in place by two times three times six mil screws so that's all of those in and then finally we just got these sticky pads which once again we can put over these sections here so as you can see that is pretty much the base completed i'm sure we're going to have a catch which is going to keep that into place just this section here because at the moment it wants to come up uh, but that's all there is to do in that stage obviously we do have some photo etch for the ship which we're going to do later on So the first section we need is the stand that looks just like this and on the other side here we're going to be putting in two magnets and they just push into these recesses one 
and two. Now on a sprue here, we've got two magnet covers to stop them falling out. So I'll get these out into the section this way round so that the, uh, the indented side is facing up and that's gonna push them in like that. So it's one and two. Those magnets now can't move from that side. And do you remember I said about mounting this section here? Well, obviously that's what we're gonna be doing now. So we can turn this over and mount this on top just like that. Now this is gonna be held in with two PB screws, which I've got here, and one in the other side. Now these magnets, it didn't say to actually glue those in. There's nothing gonna be on them, so I can't see that falling out, but there we go. We've got the connectors in place on that side. Now, at the forward end of the stand, this section here, we've got a column to put on again. Again, it has got a notch just into the side, so it's gonna go in this way, like that. This time we're gonna be taking this stand, that's gonna go over the top like that, once again held in by the PB screws. I'm just looking at this side. I think I've got this on back to front. So, uh, you know, I'm leaving my mistakes in because I make mistakes so you don't have to. The longer side here really does need to be facing the middle. Can't believe I cocked that up. <laughs> Let's turn that around to see if that fits in there better. There, that looks better. Cool. See, I make mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> Perfect. Now before I bring the ship over, we have got some little details to put in. Now there are lots of photo etch details in this pack, as you can see, looking like this. We've got really tiny ones here. Look, check all of that out. I don't think we actually use them in this stage. Uh, but what we are going to be doing Look at that, we've got all the rigging rope as well. I'm not looking forward to that at all. I uh, guess all of that's to do with rigging. We are gonna make uh, just these um, anchor boys and stoppers, which means I do have to take off these photo etch parts here. So when they're all bent up, they should look like that. Now we have got some, <laughs> lots and lots of tiny bits of cotton in here. So let's uh, get these out. And basically it wants me to revolve these into a knot around one section and then sort of like keep wrapping it around. I've actually put a picture on the screen to show how this looks because I'm aware that this is pretty impossible to show you on the camera here. But there you go, that's one side in and then I'll just revolve this around and then cut off the excess. And there you go, that's completed. Now on this one, we're gonna be get, taking the green anchor boy just off this sprue, turn up the tab just at the side here, drop a glue on top, and I'm gonna put this anchor boy into place. So that looks like that. Now we're gonna repeat that and do a red boy in the middle. And there you go, when they're both done, they should look like that. Now the last thing I'm going to do before I go over and bring the ship over is I'm going to take the shank of the anchor. I'm going to feed this end just through here, making sure it's the right way round. So we want it this way round. So that fits quite flush in there and it's pointing upwards like that. Now the shank isn't fixed in there. It's loose in there. But we are going to be attaching that with these cables here, but we don't do that until we're actually onto the ship. So I'm gonna change all my filming now to the ship. We're gonna put all of these details that we've had from the previous stages here onto the ship. Okay, so this is what the ship is looking like at the moment. I've taken the central mast off at the moment because I'm gonna be doing a lot of uh, work on this. I don't wanna knock it. So uh, that's over to one side at the moment. Uh, and as you can see, it's now on the stand under here. Now we do have this little gap here, which is gonna be fixed in a second. I'm gonna show you how we're doing that. But for now, the cotton uh, egg boys that we just made are gonna be going on the bow section just here. So I'll put them in and show you what they look like. And there you go. When they're in, they should look like that. Now, the other thing you'll notice, I've just put a small bit of grating just by the front there where the anchor's gonna go. So let's put the anchor in. Now, I don't mind telling you, that was really hard. That took about half an hour to get that in. But there you go. Whew. 
that's that section complete. <laughs> Crazy. So the next detail we had to put in was just some of the flat guns here. That's these guns here. So we had one, one over here and exactly the same on the other side. And then just down here, we had one this side and one just there. And again, that's mirrored on the other side. Now, the next thing it wanted me to do is on the aft section here, it wanted me to replace this C8 cable and put an extension lead in there. I didn't really need to do that, but I've done it anyway. So uh, I guess some people had to tight fit in on that cable eight there, but that's all in. Now, if there was a surefire way to break your model, basically they want me now to take off this uh, middle superstruct section here, because we're going to be working on this section to stop the gap that you're seeing here. We're going to be reinforcing that now to do that we're going to be removing these points here and we're going to be putting a brace across this section here so let me show you what that looks like and now as you can see with that brace in the uh holes have gone so uh that's still able to come off as you can see the turbine room Now the last brace that's going in is going to be going above the gearbox section here. This is going to pull the sides in so there's no gap around the decking that we had before like this here. So uh, let's install that and show you what that looks like. And there you go. That's the other brace in as well. So now let's put everything back together. Another detail just at the aft section there is some more anchor chains going into those three points there. That took like 20 minutes to do. That was so hard. So then the last thing that needs to do is just the railings that I've got there and exactly the same on the other side. Seems like they're a bit of an afterthought, everything we put in there. We could have done that a long time ago, so it wasn't so fiddly putting them in now. So what I'm going to do is just put that central mast back on and show you what that looks like. So there you go. Central mast is on and uh, that is all there is to do in that stage. Oh my God. Now, as you can see, let me just chuck that on the floor. This is MDF. It's actually painted MDF with a print on the top of it. We've got uh, some dials. That looks fun. We've got these lovely rubber button things to press. <laughs> quite a few of those uh, we've got some screws and we've got the base here so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to be connecting up the motherboard to this unit so we've got the power socket here hopefully you can see this okay which is going to go in here could only go in one way get in there you'd think they'd assemble this for us but no we've got to do it ourselves and then line that up with the screw holes that we've got there we want 2.3 times 5 mil screws okay so that's all four of those in that's a good start next thing we're going to do is uh we're going to put these rubber things in this mat here i'm just trying to figure out what way they've got it they've got it this way around so i'm guessing let me just uh figure it out they're just going to be pushed into the holes here but that's not the one that one is though so that they're all flat in there like that so that's one then we've got let's figure out how this one goes this way around two oh this is fun this is like one of those old kids games where you can't put the blocks in the shapes there we go excellent uh number three uh this has got eight on that one fits perfectly in there and number four in there like that excellent now they want me to put this on top here without them falling out so i'm guessing it's probably best to do it that way and then let grab oh look we got buttons now <laughs> that's excellent i am quite impressed with this i have to say just making sure that bites down on both corners that's it now we're going to be putting some two times six times eight mil screws that's these really long ones here so get these in on all four corners 
one. This has gone together quite easy, to be honest with you. I thought this was going to be a lot harder. Two. Oh, there's four screws here, actually. Didn't, uh, five screws, didn't realise that. Three. It's a big old uh, control board, isn't it? I'm going to show you on the main camera in a second. Four. And one more. Just down the centre there. Is number five put the cover in at the back here and like all of these you know what i never ever keep these uh little screws at the back the amount of times you have to change batteries on them i always lose these but there we go that's him that's what that looks like all we've got to do then is put these on which means sprue cutters at the ready get these all cut off i'm guessing these are just a pushing but they are they have got a um, semi-circular hole now the ocd in me says when i push these on which i will uh put on i am going to put them all to zero because <laughs> it's just uh it it doesn't feel right having the wrong, wrong way around that that one's the other way around there we go almost there these two are here there we go and then lastly this one here make sure they're all nice and tight in there and there we go okay i'm gonna try and film this as best i can because i'm gonna operate the remote control and then i'm gonna show you exactly what it does so this is the power button here when i turn that on You'll see it's going to do a calibration, all the guns here and here. It's going to leave that to do what it's doing. They all go back to their points where they started. As you can see, straight there and straight there. So we're now able to use this remote control. So if I press the on button, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this dial here. This is turret A. When I turn that, as you can see, it turns. No problems at all. Underneath, we've got firing and elevation. So when I put firing, you can see it's firing and elevation up and down. And I can turn it wherever I want. And I can do that with all of these dials on top. So if I want to do Bruno, I can turn that and back and then as you can see I can control all the ones down the front or the back sorry just move down so you can see these ones turning as well so I'm gonna leave those there because that is what the top of these do here as a matter of fact it's probably best to lie this down so the next thing we're going to do is these 15 centimetre turrets. I can actually control them individually. So if I go over to them, as you can see, that's one and the other way. And then I could just go through them and the third one there. They do the other side. And as you can see, that's how they work. Okay, so that's those. Next one, we've got the bow anchor. So we look at that. Get the shadow out of the way. As you can see the capstans are moving, that's going up, and then the other way to go down. And we could do exactly the same with the stern anchor over here. Going up, going down. Lovely. Okay, next ones we've got, we've got the bow light and the stern light. So that's the bow light on. And down the bottom end there, there's the stern light on as well. Let's go back. We've got the search lights and bridge lights. So, search lights, they're all on, looking good. Bridge lights, they're all on as well. Excellent. Okay, next thing we got is the navigation lights. I'll press that one. And as you can see on this side here, we've got the green navigation light. And then on this side here, 
we've got the red navigation light, we've got a horn, Then we've got a foghorn. And then we've got firing sound. Then we've got this one. These, these are pre-programmed uh, sort of things. So what we can do is put radar, and all the radars are gonna turn. As you can see, they're working good. And then the pre-programmed ones, this is gonna seem like it's pausing. These two are free are pre-programmed. What I'm gonna do is press this one that says enemy to port. You ready for this? Gonna like this. It will do something in a second. Find backboard clear up. good and then enemy to starboard is just the other way around now the propellers are controlled by this last one here so if i go ahead and i'll show you the back here there's all the propellers running and if you want them running the other way you just press the opposite one a stern and then as you can see they're now running the other way and then the dial at the top will move the rudders, which I'm just turning now, as you can see. And the rudders are turning absolutely perfectly. So, that, let's turn the lights on again, is a perfect test. That's how the Bismarck works. It's actually connected to the stand under here, and the power's going in here. It does take batteries, but I've actually got mine with a power mod that you can get from Partwork Upgrades. Uh, and that means I'm not using battery power to power the ship. But I hope you like that test. And I'll just give you some glory shots now of the Bismarck. There you go that's everything you can see why i didn't put the rigging and the crane rigging in this video because you'll be looking at a probably an eight or nine hour video but i will get on that i haven't started it myself yet but i will get to start on that as well but i think you'll agree it looks so impressive the way it is at the moment but i really do hope you like that video if you did please remember to give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already please remember to subscribe other than that take care